<laughs> we, were, we were up at Blackwood hitting balls, and, uh, and suddenly just... Okay, this is the uh, September 27th Transportation Committee coming to order. Um, we can uh, we can just get right to it. Um, the RFP update, let's start with that. Um, that's first, I'm sorry, let's just first go around the table uh, for the record and have people state who is, who is here. Scott Potts. Mike Wolf. Lauren Small. Dane Oaks O'Neill. Carol Likes. Very good. And there's uh, a couple members of the public are present as well. Um, okay, so the first item on tonight's uh, agenda is the RFP update. Uh, so, Lauren, do you want to give us the status of where we are and then we can talk about if you want to add anything in there? Yeah. Okay. We originally. We originally sent out a total of eight RFP packets held the August 30th pre-bid meeting. Three, uh, three contractors uh, were here, one being Quigley and Rhodes and Klein quickly indicated to us that day that they wouldn't be responding. And then the solicitor suggested that we waive the mandatory pre-bid rule and extend our time, which we announced two weeks ago at the Cal. So now the submission date is this Friday, September 30th at 11 a.m. Question is, Oh, and, and at that point, we then submitted to or sent out an additional five packets to additional contractors. So, as I said earlier, Friday, currently Friday the 30th at 11 a.m. is the deadline. Question now is, do we want to make any further adjustments to the RFP related to requirements of whether it be, uh, just let me back up, the, the, the RFP as it relates to inspecting the bus at the end of a run, the current RFP mentions the, the uh, state Pennsylvania school bus driver's manual that the driver should be familiar in it and adhere to guidelines in the driver's manual. The driver's manual is specific in that it says after your last drop off in a safe location make sure to walk to the back of the bus and check for sleeping or hiding students before returning to the yard. So the question is, do you want to be more specific in the body, body of the RFP and specifically put in that paragraph from the driver's manual? And secondly, do you want to add a uh, mandatory child safety alarm system requirement to all vehicles? Steve, um can we fairly say, I've obviously seen your handbook, and I know that obviously that you're, you know, it's in your policy to do this, and you made that very clear, and like I said, I've seen it myself, so I know that it's there. I believe Mr. Small has seen it as well. Um, can we fairly safely assume that every transportation, that everyone who does this for any, any company in the business of providing school bus transportation for children is going to have the same policy in their handbook, they right? They are. Absolutely. Okay, so I mean, so we could add the verbiage to the RFP, but in some ways it's redundant because any company that would possibly bid and end up getting the contract is going to have the language in their company handbook anyway, right? 
Um, and any driver, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, any driver with an S card in the state of Pennsylvania they're, is tested based on this book. They're tested on, based on that book, yes. Trained and tested on that book. And that is the verbiage from this book. Very clearly, under unique dangers of loading and unloading zones, it speaks to walking to the back of the book. Okay. So. All right, so like I said, my opinion would be, it seems like overkill to have the language in the RFP I because, I, because I think... Uh, first of all, even if it weren't in the, in the handbook, I think it's a fairly common sense, uh, you know, it should be a fairly common sense issue anyway, but having said that, given that it's in there, we know that they're tested on it, and that any company is going to have it in their policy, it seems to me that that would be overkill. The, the other question is, do you want the RFP amended to include all vehicles under contract having the alarm, the alarm system. What is the tile alarm? Is that the seat well, there's alarm? various types, but uh, typically it's tied to the ignition, so that there's a button you have to press in the back of the you butt, have to walk or else to the back alarm of the bus, Hit a release button, and if you don't, alarm sound. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, one one that I'm familiar with. If the alarm sounds and the driver ignores the alarm, then the horn begins to sound. So somebody's going to know that. But there's various systems out Once there. again, I know that some of your buses have them and some don't at this point. Uh, yes, but we're installing now, and I'm right. down to about four buses that I have to finish up to get the fleet done. Okay. Excluding the vans. The right. vans are pretty tough to do. Correct. Right. And that was the case in the, with the Kendo child, right? Was that it was a van, not a bus? I mean, it wasn't a full-size bus, no, right? Well, I, no, my, the mini buses are fine. You can, okay. It's the nine passenger vans that are a problem to install. I haven't found a system for them yet. So we're, we're going with the sign in the back window right now. Okay. And okay. Grinds are doing the same. They are, Wayne should be updating his also. Okay. And the alarms that you have, are they... Are they like what Lauren described, where it just makes noise if the, you know, is it a button in the back that needs to right. be? Right, the ones, the ones on the international, the newer buses that are standard now. Yep. Uh, they are, the lights will start flashing in the front of the bus when the driver turns the initial off. They have to go back, and there's two ways to deactivate it. One or the other, you push a button to deactivate it, or you lift the emergency door handle, and that deactivates it. It depends which system you have. Okay. But if you don't do that, then the, the horn starts to blow. Okay. And what about the situations where it was an aftermarket, you know, an add-on as opposed the same to thing. exactly the same? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How much does it cost? Uh, did you tell me 139 or something? The kit, the aftermarket kit, is around 139 dollars, and then since the installation. Couple right. Couple hours installed. What's that? Couple hours. Yeah, about two hours. Okay. It's not a huge, huge burden. No, no. I, I mean, you agree that it's not a huge burden, right? Other than taking the time to do it, right? Financially, it's not a hardship adding them it's not, to no, the buses. I mean, actually, um, the one dealer I deal with, actually, both the body heard about our situation. So, what can we do? I said, well, I got to get these alarms in as fast as I can. They actually sent a man up for two days and helped me put some in. So, we got, we got five or six in. In those two days, okay. He's the road man. He has other things to deal with. But yeah, yeah, that's so great. So we're down to about four, and I think Wayne said he's somewhere around that that number also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I kind of like that idea. Any new buses being manufactured? Or are they pretty much standard? They're standard now. That's what I thought. Yes. Do you have any? They weren't end? standard in the. They're standard in the big buses. They were not standard in the smaller buses. You know that. Like the one that the trial right. was left in. Um, since then, I had talked to Wolfington, and I think they're pretty well sold on the fact that they're going to just order in. Okay. Standard on theirs. Okay. What's the smallest capacity of a microbus now? Manufactured capacity. I mean, um, vans are nine we, passenger. But and then we go. Then you just go up to like a single wheel, right. or a single wheel bus, and then from there on up. 
I guess you could get down from 10 up to uh, anywhere up to 30 passengers. Right, that's right. The 30, cut, 30. That's the cutaway version. Right, right. But but the, the smallest manufactured capacity of, of a of a bus body, a school, van body, a school bus itself. Right. Yes. Steve, do you have any idea when they about when they started making the um, when they were mandatory, like when they were built in, when they started coming with the buses? I got I got to say that I have a two thousand five or six that was, it was in there. Okay. And it seems to so around there, you think it's been ten there, years yes. ish that they've been that standard? That's the international version of our body. Yep. Um, I have learned. <laughs> that Freightliner C2s, we pulled those in to install the, the alarm system and they're wired up just a little differently. We called the dealer and they said, oh, well, those are in there. You, you just got to get it hooked up to it and turn it on. I'm thinking, why would you put something in? I didn't even know they're in there. Why would you put something on, an option on a bus and not turn it on? <laughs> so anyway, I got three buses like that to get turned on and I think Wayne informed me he has one to get turned on. So that's you got to get them down to do that. Okay. Okay. But yeah, so I'd say 2005, six, somewhere in that area, there's okay. started to become a real standard. So I'm in agreement with Carol. It seems to me that given that they're standard on new buses and that the, you know, it's not terribly expensive to add them um, to buses that don't have them, it seems like we should. Okay. It, it should do you guys agree with that? Scott, do you agree yeah. that we should just have them be standard and... That that's the case. I need to put out a quick addendum tomorrow, anyway, addressing some routine questions. I call them from the original mandatory pre-bid. Nothing substantial. I held off sending that. I was going to put it last week, and I said I'll wait till tonight and see what they want to do because I'll simply add the alarm system is mandatory, and I'll address these questions. In so doing. I believe we, we could uh, keep the opening for 11 o'clock Friday. No reason to extend it. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Okay. Great. Steve, thanks for the information on that. That was very helpful. Um, okay. So moving on to routing software. I put before you tonight the three quotes from. The uh, three that made, well, three most recent presenters. Uh, the uh, original presenter is your current software. I didn't get a sense that there was strong interest in the current software. We know the figure is 4,300 or some such a number. Um, Transfinder, I had hoped, would be here tonight. If you recall, at our last meeting in July when we were doing presentations, they had a marketing guy here that just kind of get an over, gave an overview because the real guy couldn't be here. Well, the real guy couldn't be here again tonight. The question is, do you want me to, to uh, still try to get him here next month? He did submit the proposal today with the pricing. I, I cut to the chase, if you will, and, and put the proposal page right up front, pulled it out of uh, both of uh, both Tyler that presented in July and Transfinder, and I made a copy of, of, uh, of Bus Boss Orbit as well. So you've got all the numbers there in front of you, but the question is, do you want to see Transfinder real time? Lauren, did you uh, have the opportunity to look at the no, I didn't. To do it, okay. I just got it this afternoon. I wondered if we had any sort of side by side, you know, what's included, I, what's not included. I, I started to do a comparison spreadsheet, and I realized that it was kind of like solicitors. It's tough to compare. Right, right. The only thing that the big difference was the one used the better satellite service, I think, the better locator service. One used the, the um, with the emergency routing as opposed to GPS. Right, the 911, that was... Uh, 911, was that, that was Transfinder. That was Transfinder, yeah. That was kind of one I was leaning toward, to be honest with you. Well, if you'd like me to call him in the morning and say, look, friend, 
get your schedule in place and be here. You're saying that their offer expires at the end of. Uh, well, I'm sure that could be extended. Okay. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm just taking a cursory look here, obviously, but it, the pricing doesn't seem that dissimilar yeah. from the other two, right? I mean, not. Right, they're all coming in about the same. They're all more expensive than the current software, but uh, it's very clear. I mean, Steve, you know that I was there, right? I mean, Ron made it clear that uh, there's some functionality in bus tracks that doesn't work, um, and that that has made his life difficult. So I believe we observed that in yeah, the presentation. Yeah. So we're, you know, uh, we've eliminated them. Um, we won't be sticking with with bus tracks, certainly. Um, they are cheaper, but I th there's a reason they're cheaper. I, I think you know, I think he's pretty much a one-man show, and it might have gotten a little bigger than uh, than Dick can handle at this point. So, um, yeah, I, Lauren, why don't you? Do, I, my inclination is the same as Carol's to go with TransFinder, but it is hard to say that without actually having yeah. seen the software I I demo. And I, I told him that I said, in all fairness to you. I'd like to see your numbers. I've been begging for those. He didn't want to send the numbers until he could do a presentation. Mm. And is, he, is he truly interested in yeah, it, being here? Well, I know in July he did have the uh, family emergency. And uh, he is their key player as far as making yeah. that presentation. So would, We didn't have a meeting in August. Is your understanding that should we contract with TransFinder that he would do the training as well? Is he the same guy because well, he's the technical expert? I don't know if he'd do, he, he would be a part of it, but okay. as Good. far as presenting, marketing. Right. My, my only concern would be if he's got some ongoing personal no. person, you know, and then he can't, yeah. then we can't get the training done. Yeah. <laughs> Having the new software really isn't very valuable. If <laughs> well, I'll call him in the morning and uh, what do we have to do with for October the 25th, 24th, 10th and 24th are our meetings, correct? Yes. The 25th Tuesday is our meeting. Right. Okay. Okay. And, uh, Do any of you have any objection to waiting on this until waiting one additional month? You said that the, you said that the bus tracks... November 30th is the license expired, but we knew that we were going to have to buy well, it. We're going to overlap anyway. Right. So... Um, okay. All right. So I mean, it's not terribly it's pressing, good. but um, there's actually a, a transpot a transfinder presentation for the city of Schenectady oh, on YouTube. Oh, really? Thirteen minutes. That's where they're located. Schenectady, New York. Maybe you should all look on the committee. Look at that. Right yeah. Away. What's the keywords? Schenectady. I just put in transfinder into YouTube and it was the fourth result. It's 13, 13, 17. Okay. 13 minutes, 17 seconds. So. Okay. We did. And you Our, said that the IU contracted with TransFinder this year, right? right so. Right. Um, and I also, since July, I believe Twin Valley moved away from Tyler. The night they were here, they were going to Twin Valley the next day. Oh, right, right. And I believe I heard they made a change. I don't know what direction they went. Okay. They could have gone with the order. Do you know how many um, how many districts the IU is serving? Well, as of last night, they're bidding on another one. The school bill voted to go RFP. I got an email on that today. Okay. But they have several, right? So They, I believe, have... Three right now: Tuppahawken, Reading, and one other. Because that was their reasoning for not bidding on ours. Okay. So I would like to think that they, if they've also done their due diligence, there's some value in knowing that they chose Transfinder because they probably went through a similar process. And if they have more schools to deal with, the routing software is that much more important, I would think. So. Lauren. Someone told me that it was. Kind of a in-house type. All proprietary, like. Do you think um, we could make a call to the IU and see how they're how satisfied they are with like the customer support software? Sure. That's you a know, good idea, yeah. American foreign, how responsive they are. 
Thank you. Okay. So having uh, discussed that, I guess, like I said, we'll, we'll try to get uh, TransFinder in to actually do an actual demo uh, for the next meeting, and we'll uh, move forward from there. You know what, could we, um, I don't know if we want to, but do we want to run the, a video? I, I'm personally a little bit out of, I'm not fresh on the Orbit software, so that maybe we could freshen up with a YouTube video at the next meeting too, just to take a quick peek at that again before we have our final she decision. Would probably be willing just to come back. Over. Yeah, I don't know if we want to Whatever, it's times. just a thought. I'll then as we hone in to look at them again real quick, side by side. I've, I've got to call her anyway to firm up the proposal on. I think if I just had a, like a refresher, I don't need a full presentation. Right. I don't know about the rest of you, but if I could just see it again, I could make a better Okay, yeah, but I mean, we can certainly decision. look. Decision, I want to make a fair. If she has something of that nature, I'll set a projector up. And, uh, Would you mind? Is that okay with everybody? I'm just it's fine with me. Yeah, it's been four it's months. It's just been so long. That proposal has got a May date on it. I know yeah, I'm leaning exactly. towards this I think one, but I don't want to... I think she was, here in, she was here in May, she was here in June, and then the other two came in July. And then we skipped August, positive. and now it's September. <laughs> Time does fly. Okay, so moving on to the next agenda item, if there's not any more questions or comments. Okay, uh, the transportation clerk succession plan. Um, uh, Thanks, Carol. Switch up over there. Yeah, I put it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think everyone present knows that I spent a day two weeks ago with Ron uh, in the transportation office, uh, just trying to get the lay of the land, figure out how they did things and whatnot. It was very informative. Um, I had a lengthy conversation with with Ron in between him fielding calls and whatnot. Um, I don't know how many of you have met, obviously you have met Ron, but as far as people at this table, I think Lauren's probably the only one who's actually met Ron. Um, he, there's a great deal of institutional knowledge that Ron has about the bus runs, right? Because he's been, he's been the transportation coordinator, I believe, for eight years. Um, so he has a bunch of institutional knowledge and um, I had hoped to convince him to continue to be the transportation clerk, whether it was in the house or not, because I didn't want to lose um, the institutional knowledge that he's compiled over these years. But he's made it clear that uh, he's 68 and he's not looking to continue to work uh, full time. So, it's important to me to get uh, a new to have some overlap between the new clerk and Ron for two reasons. Number one, as I said, there's a whole bunch of institutional knowledge that I would like Ron to try and share with the new clerk, you know, as time permits with regard to training or whatnot. The other reason is there's going to be a new software package, and I don't want I don't, I'd like to have the new clerk on staff before we get trained on whatever the new software is because I don't want us to have to train the new transportation clerk on how to use the software. I want him to be there when the professionals are doing the actual training so that they get the full training experience that anyone who chooses to attend the training would, um, would get. So clearly, clearly there's an, a cost in having two transportation clerks um, for some period of time overlapping, but it seems like the prudent decision to me, so I just wanted to discuss with the committee whether you guys, whether you agree with that, um, because if so, I think we should take it to the board and say, hey, for this one year, we're going to have to pay, you know, a partial, you know, a prorated additional clerk uh, salary to make sure that we're in good shape for the upcoming year once we uh, think of transfer. Could you elaborate on what the value is of the quote-unquote institutional knowledge that Ron has 
Uh, you clearly are feeling something that you don't want. To, you want that transferred. But what? I mean, he has a very good sense of which hazardous routes, okay. bus stops that you know, the tr likely trouble spots. If the if the new software generates a new route, but he knows that they don't use right. that stop because right, right, there right. is a hazard issue okay. or whatever the case may be. Yeah, there's that, value in that. Right, and there's, so it seems like, he's been doing it for eight years. You guys have been doing it for that long. It seems like there's a lot of information that, that Ron has where- Only Ron? If we, I, I doubt that only Ron has it, but Ron's closest to it and, and deals with it all day, every day, as opposed to, I mean, I'm sure that there are others of you who do, but you're not, you know, that you're in and out. Maybe Ron would just consult with us as we, when we went to uh, build the routes on the new software. I'm not sure that he needs to be fully trained on, on new routing software. No, I'm not, not I'm not worried about, Ron's paid until the end of the contract as it is. So there's no right. additional expense for Ron. It's the new person who I want here for the actual software training. And I thought that was going to be, I thought we were going to consider the assistant business manager doing that. No? Are we not there? I don't think she has the ability, I don't think she has the but time from schedule. From an audit standpoint, I think I, my understanding was that the context of that discussion was just to audit, you know, routes and after they were established. But I don't know about setting it up. Right, and I was hoping, I would like, it's clear that Ron is pretty much in that office from the time that he arrives in the morning until the time that he leaves. Um, I would like Kathleen to be conversant enough that if the new clerk wanted to take an hour, had a doctor's appointment, that she could cover for an hour, right, cover calls and whatnot for an hour so that they could get lunch or for an, to run an errand or to do whatever. But, um, but I don't expect that she will have the time to be focusing, you know, to be doing a, the full-time clerk job. That job description clearly covers that now. It says... They're responsible for transportation, and they act as the transportation clerk in the absence of. So, right, right. So the key is having a, a clerk train, and she wants to be a part of the training. And, the and she has history with it at Oli, right? So um, yeah, I'm just saying it as a different, uh, when you build the routes, I think there's a spike where you need some expertise, and then I think the day-to-day -day calls as your you know, secretarial or clerk type. Well, is this committee recommending, have we had that discussion, have I missed it, that we are recommending a transportation clerk com bringing, coming back in house? The RFP the has it both ways, right? The RFP gives you the option. My, uh, my preference, and I'm only, I obviously can only speak for me, is to have it in house. Um, full time job? Yeah. Is Ron full time? Yeah, Ron's full time, right? He's a. Uh, Monday through Friday, whatever summers the busing off. hours are. So, and, summers off, he doesn't work summers. No, he works summers too. Oh, God, that's that's work. He's busier what in the day? summer than you prepare all your lawn. That's when he's doing the routes? That's when we're preparing, yeah. yes. Yeah, the minute, the minute uh, he shuts down in June, then he begins working on the routes and uh, getting everything together so that mm. the notifications go up mid-August. So the RFP is going to have a in-house versus in house. In their house or in our contract well, versus yeah. irrespective of that, you're still the transition point is what's you know, because either way, it sounds like Ron's, you know, heading off into the sun <coughs> very correct. shortly. So the your 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 point is still valid that, that there should be some type of overlap to whether they're gonna be working for us or they're working for the vendor to have a transition plan yeah, in place. I, it's still, I agree. Right, I and I mean, now that is, I realize, we're, having it screwed up is going to be a lot more costly than spending another, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, 30, the, 000, it's thirty 000. grand per year, right? It's a, yeah. or something in that. You want, right, Steve, right now? Something like that. Yeah. So I mean, if they were here for, I mean, six months, just as a, I mean, it won't even be a full six months, probably, but just right. if it was six months of overlap. Uh, Fifteen grand is not going to make or break the district, especially given how important it is. And whether and you hold hold them over, you know, offer uh, like it's cons as a consultant through the mm -hmm. summer into maybe the first week of September, as you guys probably you know adapt to the the changing uh, you know schedules. Um, so that way they can work on that schedule together. You know, so Ron can impart the, that knowledge about, like you said, right. stops that are not acceptable and. 
and then you know it's when it's go live come the beginning of school year they're still together and then through that for, through that transition phase when usually like all hell breaks loose for right you know right for the first few weeks where work, it's they're they're working on it together mm -hmm. and then you can slow you know slow transition out of out of well, I think that's great but what what's Ron's theory come say December is he what now? When's he's summer. He's no, through he's June thirtieth. I mean, as far as does he have a cut off date, and he's going to walk. I, whether no. we'll I and I think we could convince him to stay for like if we wanted him for the summer in September or something. I think we could convince oh, him. Oh, you talking next year? Next yeah. Year. yeah. Well, you yeah. have to take that up with Ron. Right, but <laughs> I I think. He clearly doesn't want to do it full time for another full year, but I do think that if we wanted, like I said, I had a lengthy conversation with him. I'm inclined to believe that if we just wanted him for, um, for for a short period at the beginning of the transition, he'd be okay with that. That's my. But I, I we'd have to speak. Yeah, to him. But I, I I think. Does somebody want to reach out and confirm that? Before? Yeah, I will. I will do that. I will do that. So by by November, if if we. We should be through evaluating our RFP by the 1st of November. And we should have made a decision if we have software. presentations on the software in October. So by the 1st of the year, realizing that December we don't get together a lot, but we should be making a decision on a clerk. Right. We'll know whether it's in-house or with contractor. Exactly. We'll know what software we have. We'll have the plan in place for the training. We'll have their schedule. So then, in the meantime, we can talk to Ron about what available he, availability he has from July 1 next year forward on an hourly basis or whatever mm -hmm. to help us. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because he's, uh, he's, he's going to be uh, producing the reports as of June 30th for... Reimbursement. The provided service this year. Yep. So there's got to be some some kind of an agreement there, unless Steve's going to pop on the computer and get those data out. Me? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So. All right. So I will talk to Ron, but like I said, I just wanted to bounce up. So you're fine with recommending to the full? Are we okay with recommending to the full board? That there, there, some overlap is necessary, and we're, for, said, for this one year, we're going to have to pay. The transition plan right. includes that more of a handoff. Okay, yeah. we're in agreement on that. So, okay, all right. So I will move that forward to the to the full board. <clears throat> Let me ask, what's the timeline for software implementation with, for, say, a new a new company coming in as far as Transfinder? Do you know how long that takes for the district to put all that data? I don't. I don't know. Well, putting, putting we, the they data do it. in is, is, that's just a rollover of the student data with their 911 addresses that are in our system. So that conversion we should take. Yeah, well, well we, we have been forward, Scott Matt's forwarded our student data okay. without names, just address. Been already putting it in. Into the three demos. Uh, so that part of it's seamless. Right, but it does take a while. I, because I, I asked that, I've asked that question of two firms and said, how long would it take, you know, if we contracted with you to actually have you input the data and have it, so we could run them concurrently well, gonna, and figure you're out. You're going to have two to three months of training. Right. The last time I I brought in a new software up north, I I had training scheduled live right. and by webinar, probably three months. Right, and I think but it takes a while. Getting the data into their system is quick. Then, then you start playing with the rugs. Right, right. Okay, so I think that handles the uh, succession plan issue. Um, okay, the next item on the agenda, um, as you can see, says about the busing being a having become a taxi service. Um, so what I'm alluding to with this agenda item is the fact that as the, um, well, there seems to be a disconnect between the schools, between the actual transportation policies for some of the schools. 
Is it all of them? Or I think I think Rex wrote. I think the middle school might be. Well, all all of the buildings in their student handbook, their board approved student handbooks, speak to right. no change. You know, you, you're, you're assigned a route unless it's a custody issue. Right. And what have you. If, and that has to be court ordered custody. It's not just they, we can't just you can't just call and say my spouse and I have a custody arrangement. Right. It has to be a court. You have to provide documentation that it's a court ordered custody there's, situation. There's various. They're they're not all identical. The elementaries are pretty close. Middle school is a little. But I think right. as you said, there's been a disconnect right. because. There's been a variance from the board approved policies and mm -hmm. student handbooks to directing the transportation contractors to be flexible. Right. So this this goes to what sort of what you were saying, Carol, that if it, it seems to you that the, there should be a busy time and then stuff should pretty much like once the mm -hmm. routes are worked mm -hmm. out, there mm -hmm. things should really slow down. But I think what's happening is that yep. people are literally calling and saying as I, my understanding now is that if a parent emails a principal and says, my kid has a play date with so-and-so, no. can they ride the bus home? And the principal signs off that then they call Ron and say, this, this person can get on this bus and go home. It's chaos. Right. So it, it, cre it creates a problem set that I think is in my opinion, is wholly unnecessary. And irresponsible. It's just um, and just, just create, I mean, you were just asking for trouble. It puts Ron in an awkward place and it puts the principals in an awkward place. Right. And it's in violation of the board of And it's in violation of the board of group policy. policy. There's a reason why they're there. So that's why I have this on the agenda, is that in my opinion, what's in the policies is what we should be, yeah. is what's in the current policy is what we should be, um, did, did you forward any of those policies to anyone except me? No. Okay. So Lauren, yeah. Lauren, Lauren knew when we coordinated on the agenda. Um, Lauren, it was my agenda item, and I came up with it, of course, because I spent all day with Ron. So I knew that this was going on. So I asked Lauren. He said, "Well, let me get the policies." Good. So he asked all the principals for um, their policies, and I'm pretty sure that. As Lauren indicated, all of them except the middle school are ironclad. No, you can't change anything. And then may, there might be a little wiggle room with uh, the middle school. I think they all have some some speak, speak somewhat regarding custody, which we're tied to, and, and the contractors understand. Yeah, right? but, but and this, that's not going to be an everyday thing. So bouncing mm -hmm. back and forth and calling Ron. Mm -hmm. Ron's getting the calls, and Ron's saying, hey, not me. That, you got to call the principals, and they're going to sign off. And he's right. Right, but they... He plans the routes. The routes are in place. But it's happening, right? I mean, we know that... It's happening. I think you experienced that. I did. Ron denied a change. Yeah. You, you experienced firsthand. Yeah, and then somebody called Harris, and then Harris called and said, change it. <laughs> okay, we got to yeah. get that thing. So, in my opinion, it just creates more trouble than it's worth. Uh, you know, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna. I hate to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, that's but fine, Steve. We, go ahead. We're gonna lose another kid doing this. Right. It's gonna. Get, they're gonna get off the wrong I, stop. I completely they're, agree with you. It, it's creating a, a real security and safety problem. And, and given how crowded some of the bus routes are this year, right? Also, you can't always say there's space on the bus for an extra kid or two kids or whatever the case might be, right? I mean, it just isn't. It's not always feasible. Um, I understand that, I mean, what we need to understand is that clearly the parents who are used to being able to avail themselves of our flexibility are going to be unhappy if we, if we switch things That's now and say we're, safety issue. I, I understand that. I'm simply saying okay. clearly the, the public relations between the community and the board is not at an all-time high and this is going to be another decision which the community is going to say right you don't kids. care about us and, and so i'm you, not if you're interested in the kids then that's right I, I, i'm not saying it's the wrong decision in fact i put it on here obviously i wouldn't put it on here if i didn't okay. think it was the right thing but we just need to be aware that it's a, going to be another pr 
So we're making a recommendation to the full. Are we making that recommendation to the full board that policy be followed? I mean, I, yeah. when it I get through here, I, I will forward these policies to the full board. Okay. Then someone can communicate, Mr. President, to the full board the reason for me communicating this. Are you okay? Are you, I can do it. If, I say what's ever in the policy, unless you want the policy committee to look at it. Well, that's to make sure. Well, but you see, this this is a district policy. This is what's well, set forth in the student handbook, handbook that the board has approved. Right, 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 right. So it's not right out of like policy policy. Right, it's and that's why policy. I put it on here okay. so that if we if we made the decision that we wanted those policies to reflect the flexibility, then we could do that. And then go through whatever whatever uh, steps would be required in changing the policies at the individual schools to reflect this. But my contention is that is that it's not a <laughs> the like bus said, should, should not be a taxi service. They shouldn't be using them as that. Policy. And that like, you know him we having to change start. routes daily. Is it something we can be read to to us? I mean, are we? From the I, I, I'm sure you don't have the answer, but is it you know uh, ninety percent of the changes are. Ten percent of the students or families. Yeah. Or, is it do, do you have a sense of that? What's that? Steve, do you happen to know if it's not like ninety percent of the people that change them? Ninety percent of the change are from ten percent of the people that. Is it the same right, people kind of doing it, or is it widespread? Yeah, it might be eighty twenty. You know, something like that. But yeah, it. We used to just use if you didn't change for five days, you weren't changing at all. I think exactly. that's great. And that's what's in policy 808. And that five, five days, days rule. yeah, five days. That's if you didn't change policy. for five days, you weren't changing. And is there is there a lead time in that policy too? Because I'm I, I like the five day policy personally. I think that if you know if if for whatever reason someone's parents are going to be out of town for a full week and they're staying with some other people, and you can do it in advance. Because you know that they're going to be out of town for a week and reschedule it. I, I, I'm more than happy to do that. I, it speaks to three days advance notice on some of it here. Okay, so and I think that's, I think three days advance notice only for changes of five days or more is reasonable. I think that's a reasonable cutoff point. So um, the policy committee can certainly review policy 808, which is the district policy. But then when you get into these student handbooks, which uh, the principals. And I've been speaking to one principal today, they, they, they called me and, and said, if, if I'm not going to enforce this section of the student handbook and the parents know that I'm not enforcing it, what else are they going to ask me to Yeah, That's a different problem. Yeah. Right, but, but it's, yeah, yeah. It's immaterial to what mm -hmm. we're working on. Exactly, mm -hmm. but that was their, their point. That's if the if I'm giving around a student <laughs> handbook that the board approves, I need to be able to say it. That's right. Yeah. So I was I was only in the transportation office for one day, and there were multiple requests for one day changes, uh -huh. just in the one day that I was there. Which means that if we comply, then the route sheet has to change, you know, for the following, and some of them were for the next day. So overnight, you know, Ron needed to change things for tomorrow's bus runs. Um, it just. And sometimes it goes, they want two days here and three days here. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that, that gets confusing. Of course. Especially, I get, I'm sorry, maybe I shouldn't be talking, but. It's not. It's no, fine. we need to hear this, yeah. I'm sorry, it, like me, I'm a substitute. I get on there, yeah. and I'm, I'm just, I'm following the route, and I'm making the stops. I mean, I'm counting kids, but I'm not, I'm not paying attention, I'm sorry, to which, what day it is and where this kid's going to get off. Yeah, uh, and if you're not you know, familiar. A two day here and a three day there, that's really rough. Yeah, yeah. Now that might be a permanent thing, but that is that is bad too. That's a, kind of a different situation, but that's, that's we're going to lose a kid there too one day. But you agree that if it's court ordered two days and well, three yeah, days, there's nothing we can do about right. it, right? But like despite the complexity. Right, my, my point is just that if it's court ordered it's fine. and unfortunate, sometimes the arrangement is going to be difficult for wh whoever the transportation provider is. But if it's court ordered, we we'll need to it. find a way to make but it that work. That cuts the risk down anyway. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like I said, my feeling was just that. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how it was for any of you, but I, I still remember distinctly. You did not get on anybody when I was when I went to school. 
I got on my bus where I was supposed to get on, and I got off at where I was supposed to get off. And there was no, I didn't, there was no latitude, literally no latitude, right? You couldn't, it didn't matter if I was going to somebody else's house if my parents were out of town. Yeah. I got on the bus where I got on the bus, and I got off it there. And then if I needed to go to somebody else's house, my parents arranged for transportation or did it yeah. themselves. But I, I mean, I understand that it's, I mean, I would like to see that, like, once we decide, effective immediately. I don't even mean start of the next school year. Oh, no, I agree. That we should, yeah, I agree we with decide, that. that's it. That starts at the top, so that someone doesn't yeah. get a call and go no. right. Well, I'm that's just right. wondering how you communicate that to, how, how that communication goes out initially to, to be ahead of the Facebook curve, okay? to say why this is important. We're doing this because, not because they're over, the buses are overcrowded, not because yeah. we're, it's the transition plan, not because of whatever. It, 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 it's people have been taking, taking advantage safety of, issue. of this and what happened in reaction to, you know, this the safety, safety of the students, it's yep. getting way too complicated. So the people don't call up tomorrow or Thursday and then find out, at, oh, we're enforcing our policy now. Now, now what? Yeah. You know, to give them some notice. Like that, maybe hey, effective, effective the first of the year or something like that. Well, yeah. No, whatever, whatever it is. Start yeah. communicating it. Whatever. Be also, we're going to have to be really, really clear and, and do well at communicating where those kids are going to end up if somebody's not at their stop. We have to be re proactive on that too. So everybody knows district. Well, I mean, well, there's there's a clear policy about that already. Uh, there is. They're supposed to take them back and whatever. Right, they do. Mid right. I'm just saying it needs to be like communicated at the same time that we say we're not going to be doing this anymore. Because if there's any confusion, like they won't. I'm just not going to be there. Maybe they're going to have to take my kid to the father's house, or you know, whatever assumptions are going to be made on that. If there's some pushback from the community. Here's the policy. Now, if you're not at that stop because it didn't work out for you that day, because that. Here's where your kid's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just, that goes hand in hand. You have some, some time to make people, put them on notice that this is going to be effective whatever date uh -huh. you get. And then can you allow people well, to come and, and talk about it. And the, the other, reason why, after Christmas. I mean, the other thing that has to happen, right, is that the administration has to buy in. I mean, 100%, right? Well, I, well, we, can't, we can't make the directive and then have... Somebody call Harris and him make an exception. Like once yeah. it's a rule, it's a rule, and mm -hmm. right. Uh, so I'm I'm not He'll saying that, that I'm not saying that one. Board. I'm not saying he won't cooperate. I'm simply saying yeah. it's a situation where we all have to be on the same page, or else. Yep. I mean, it's the board sets the course, mm -hmm. and the administration should follow the course. Okay. All okay. right. So once again, I'll bring this forward to the full board. I don't think we're going to have any trouble convincing the full board that this is the right thing to do. And hopefully then, before too long, Steve, your guys' job will get it. It would make our lives a lot easier. Uh, yeah. yeah um, if I could address the issue that you're talking about, um, parents not being at stops, this is every day. I know. At least two or three. Uh, the elementary students, you know, I think we have to have a parent or a guardian there. Kindergarten, first, second, third? It's second, no. though. Ron told second. me second, yeah. It's every day, and we take students back to the schools. Right. And what they don't understand too that you know, that, that costs money to do that also. And yeah. We, have, it, we get a lot of extra time involved in doing, doing things huh. like that. Great. I didn't know. I, I, same people. And, what's that? Same people do that. Or? I would say it's the same people. It's different ones. And and one of the problems, well, they blame it on inconsistency inconsistency of the times in the afternoon. And, and some of the times are loading uh, at these buildings. Like for instance, here, if you don't, if the bus makes the first wave, the first six or seven buses that we load here, they get loaded and they go. Okay. Now, what if one of those buses do, don't make, doesn't make the first wave? Now they're sitting out in the street for yeah. ten minutes till the, this wave moves out, and then we move in. Right. Now that bus is ten minutes later, and it. it Steve, you don't know the, us to the next item on the. Did you see the agenda? Yeah, I did. Okay, I did. right. So the next item on the agenda is exactly this, right? right? It, well, I got into something else, but what I'm saying, what I was yeah. really so addressing. They, so if their if their bus is ten minutes late with their child on it, they just leave the stop. Well, they might no, they might they not do? leave, but if well, if it's early, it, but if it's early, Seriously. they won't be there ten minutes early. Uh, right. right, but the right. policy right. is five minutes, it's right? Five minutes, and maybe we ten? need to address that yeah. since we have these different loading. Uh, what do you know? What, right now. 
do we know a policy? Is that a us policy? Is that a you policy? Like, do you happen to know? That was, I think that's in the, I think, thought that was yeah, in the handbook that? also. I thought that was in the policy. Being Lauren, could you look before. into it? Do you know what I'm referring to? What, what yeah. we're discussing is the fact that if, if a bus arrives five minutes before the scheduled it's stop cool. time, then they can take, then they can leave the stop. Hmm. If the parents aren't there, if they're five minutes early or less, right, they can leave the stop and take the child back to the school. It's five minutes is the window. So it kind of gives us a 10 minute window. But right, uh, like uh, right five now, minutes on either side. The elementary buses are loading, it's, hmm. it's pretty hard to stay within that yeah. five minute window either way. If you can see what I'm saying about loading. Yeah. If, but if you don't make the first, if you make the first wave, you're golden. If you don't, school? you're ten minutes behind. Which it's school AEC. is this? Just, just AEC? Yes. Um, this it? seems to be the biggest issue here. Should we just change the policy, not the policy, the practice for AEC right now? Because well, we'll talk about it. Okay. This is on that other thing. Because I'd be interested in also if we change the practice and it wasn't compliance, I, I would be interested in looking for if penalties to apply to parents after like three times if they. They do that. Do you, so do you have any idea where that policy would be? No, but I'll, it, I don't see an 808. I'll see if it's in the student handbook. Maybe it's guidelines. Okay, right. I mean, I, 808 is guidelines? I know. We'll have to look we'll into it. But. Okay. Let us know. Um, yeah. So we can discuss that further once we yeah. have the policy. We'll bring that back, whether we want to change the window. I mean, Steve, do you think changing the time would help you, hurt you, I mean? I think in the way things are set up right now for the probably this year and the next two years, we uh -huh. have to open the window up a little more. Just for that school? Till we get, till you phase out the EDC. Well, but the policy is gonna be the policy that's gonna to apply to them all, so. I think we need to open the window up a little bit uh, for these three years anyway. Is that what it is, three year uh, plan to yeah. phase out the EDC? Yeah. That would be the point where we can probably get buses. Well, but, we haven't made the decision yet. Well, I mean, yeah. tentatively, I mean, we have That's really a big change, too. We have to really think about that. Um, Ten minutes is a big difference. Especially the little kid in the winter. Well, that's what I mean. Uh, but it's, uh, it's difficult on both sides, right? I mean, uh, yeah. the flip side is... You don't have an Uber tracker. You can look on your phone. And see right. Okay. Well, we'll once we have that, once we dig that policy up, wherever it is, we'll bring we'll that back discussion. to this committee and we'll discuss that further. So, okay. So we'll bring that back to discuss because uh, that's sort of separate from the taxi service issue, right? Like we all agree that that's yeah. got to go, but the the changes to the window for. Yeah, the stop window, appropriate stop window. We'll, we'll talk further about that. Okay, so moving on to the last item. Um, I have these handouts here. The One of them says AEC bus loading, unloading 2016, 2017. That's the current um, loading diagram for, um, for AEC. What's happening is um, the rear lot at AEC, which is the, is the small lot, is being used for the buses. And as Steve alluded to, right now you can only get six or seven buses in the driveway area, and then the remainder of the buses stage in the area on Boone Drive. It is Boone Drive, right? Um, across the way, and they wait to get into the driveway and the kids assemble in the cafeteria. They, they load, the first wave loads from the cafeteria and then once that wave goes out, the second wave pulls in and the second wave loads. Um, this is a change from the past situation where the loading was done in the front of the school, okay? And if you look at the other two diagrams, well, I guess just this one, the one that just says AEC PM bus lineup. This is, if you compare the complexity between these two diagrams, this is how much simpler it was when they loaded in the front. 
because we could fit that much more buses. You didn't have to worry about the staging. So the, Steve and Wayne's preference would be to load in the front. The, the problem that we're having is Mr. Miller has safety concerns about the loading in the front. And the reason is this. What happens is, particularly in the morning, the, he says that no matter what he tells his parents, if you, even if you tell the parents that the child pick up and drop off is at the rear lot, that they're going to drop off in the front. And now you've got kids walking in the front between the buses during in the loading and unloading zone. And of course, the kids are small. You can't necessarily see them right there short enough that a bus driver, if, if a kid were in between, might not see the kid there. So... He thinks that the safety issue trumps the, the efficiency issue. But Steve and I and Wayne discussed this, and we think they could probably save do we th five to ten minutes. Is that what we think? Yeah, think in, so. in terms of route time, if they flip-flop back. And I, while I understand the safety concerns, I'm not insensitive to them, obviously, because obviously I'm on the school board. I didn't, I didn't get elected to school board because I want to see some kids run down by buses. <laughs> right? That was not my campaign platform. <laughs> Let's maximize the number of children. Um, it seems like if you had, if you put signs out here that said, uh, first of all, if you communicate with the parents, absolutely no loading and loading in the front lot. Second of all, you put signs here. And third, if you put somebody on this corner, if you look at your page, looking for kids coming in, right? They should be able to stop kids from who have been dropped off from walking in that way, and you try to catch the parents, right? You cannot drop your kids off here. Um, it seems to me that there could be a way, there might be a short period where you got some parents who weren't cooperating, but I think in a week, if, we, if Dane could arrange for the appropriate manpower out there to make sure that we're hitting the parents, you cannot drop your kids off here. It's a safety issue. So the kids take the two extra, take the extra sixty seconds and drive them to the back. Well, that's always that's always been a super highway for the parents, no matter what. Just having to go to the back. Hopefully. Is there a way we can get a monitor at the beginning of that this road where we come down, like to, uh, where the, the school sign is, and then they make a right turn? Can you get and don't even let them go over there. Don't even let no, them. No, you go that way towards the cafeteria. One here. person standing there. Oh, you mean at the? At you mean up here? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah, as they come in here. from? Um, uh -huh. the person standing there. I think that's going to that's be. You can put all the signs in the world. You're going to get a mom. It's going to yeah. drive right. Oh, up you're, right. Uh, you're right. I was thinking the same thing actually. Somebody right well, I, there. My, both my sons went there. How one way did, traffic? They always talk about that. How do those work? Are they volunteers? Are they like? How do you? I mean, are we willing I to pay somebody to do it just for loading? Huh? I mean, are we or are we willing to pay somebody Please. for an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon? To I am. You have crossing guard. You can you can hire someone as potential. Right. If it's you two, might have a call first. You got to see if there's a parent. They're very active. Right, but if parents. it's two hours a day, hours. right? I mean, if it's an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon or whatever, to pay somebody so that the we help, can help. we can decrease the. I mean, you don't actually decrease the ride time, but it doesn't actually change the amount of time the kids are on the bus. Right. Right. But you get the loading and unloading done faster, and oh, stay in that window too. Yeah, it, right. And it increases. It, it might help with the other problem, the right? The associated kids. problem, which is if we can, if you have a monitor and the kids get in and out at a much more con consistent time, then people are much more likely to be waiting for them at the at the bus stop, right? So it, it helps with that situation too. Um, so that's why it's on the. That's why I put it on the agenda. I only, once again, I only know this because during the tour, when I went and toured AEC with, uh, and Mr. Rathgab and Mr. Kirch showed up, um, Steve and Wayne were there at the stop in the back lot, and I, we spoke about it. And they explained to me what the issue is with the rear lot. And then when I was with Ron, I got the, you know, the diagrams. And it's very clear to me that, um, that it's, that the, this setup is increasing the amount of time. It's in, incre It's making it later for the kids to get home. Right, they're not on the bus longer, but they're because of the staging. Some kids are waiting in the. 
when we were at the meeting, um, at the board meeting, some parents said, when I think Valerie said that there were no routes that are over an hour, right? I think the reason that some parents think that routes are over an hour is because they're looking at dismissal time and the time that their kids get home. And that time is more than an hour, right? They, don't, they aren't aware that some of the kids are in the cafeteria for 20 minutes because of the staging, waiting to get on the bus in the first place. Yeah. So they're not actually on the bus for that long. They're in the cafeteria. Yeah. So. And we've eliminated a couple of those. Okay. We started mixing some uh, immaculate buses that uh, they pick up later in the afternoon. Right. We get them to do a middle school run in the morning or in the afternoon to break that up. That way yep. they, they get home earlier and it flows a little better. We're mixing the okay. immaculate and but so, yeah, I think, you know, for the committee, you all understand the issue, and that's why I brought it here. And yeah. it, clearly there is a safety concern, and I'm not insensitive to that. I don't want to sound like I'm insensitive to that. It's but mitigating a safety concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to look into a Because when, how long has this been in place? It's just this year. No, so this last year. Oh, last year, I'm sorry. Oh, last year. Oh, Thank you. Oh, but it's, right, oh, it's like harder it. because there's more buses this there's year, more right? Buses uh, there's more there's more kids at AEC, so there's more buses. The, the exit down here. I got it here. The exit from the, the APC over here is extremely tough yes. to see to get out there. And I, I don't want to see anybody get hit there, but the best thing Dwayne and I need is a school bus getting hit at that intersection where we're watching one, two, three. It's not that many roads, but it's at a bad angle. And it's hard to yeah. see and get out of there. Is there any way to get, get Abbey? What's that? Abbey Police? That a car? They, they need to park down there and help yeah, them out. Like, have lights on? And they're not, I don't think they're going to commit every day to do that. We talked to the uh, chief of police about this, and he was all in favor of not having the buses go out down here. He thinks it sounds like a good plan to go out down there. But I'm pretty sure they're not going to commit to policing the intersections. So are we in agreement that... I think they should go back to loading the kids at the bus loading area. I do. Right. And, and, we, and you agree, though, that if we're going to do that, we need to have a crossing guard I mean, some sort of... Yes, a monitor. Um, whether, like I said, whether it be paid or volunteer, depending on. Scott, do you agree with that? Yeah. Um, so, and, and when, which way do the buses leave then at this setup? Do they go back out that entrance? Or they, they come out they past here. here. They, they come still out. come down here and dump at the, the weird intersection here? The three way? Yes. Yeah. The, yes. And that's a separate issue, right? Like, and then a lot of them make that left turn and go up. Yeah, yeah down I don't down. like that at all. But. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, that's a, the objection we're having to the loading in the front is Right, named, it's a different issue. Right, and that's a different issue. The objection to, the, as opposed to the buses exiting here at the three-way, going out the other way through the development, is that, you know, the expectation is that there'll be people who complain about the buses being in the, in the development. I, mean, I, I would, I would like, risk the. Yeah, can we kill two birds with one stone rather, here? Is it possible to come in, come into the back, and then go? Uh, yeah. The are, did you guys look carefully at this? If you look at this loading plan, do you realize that the buses don't go in through the development? They don't go in on Rosecliff. They go in on the Cemetery Drive. Oh my God! And get over there, which I just think is ridiculous. Three o'clock in the afternoon. I've got right. my window. Ah, I and, didn't know that. Yeah. So once again, it's it's an incredibly inefficient route. I agree. Um, and Steve, who do you know why it's like this, as opposed to just using the roadways? I think when I think when Mr. Miller became uh, principal here, that's when he changed it to this. Okay. So if the board made the decision. We want them to load on the street, coming in that way, as opposed to coming in the cemetery and driving by here. 
and exit that. My preference would be to have them exit there too, especially because as Steve, Although, as Steve said, the people who are being bussed back the other way, Carol, the people who are being bussed back the other way, exit at the freeway, turn left on Weavertown, and then and go down Old anyway. Airport. Exactly. So like they lose several like minutes that. just being dumped here so that they can turn and go back down Old Airport. It just so that's your crazy. recommendation, line them up like this and send them back out, that part, like a yeah. cir circular yeah. pattern. That, yep. Our busing partners are saying that's the safest, most efficient way that's to do that. That's the most efficient way. Now what about cars busing? coming in and picking up kids? Then? No, they don't. Nope. They won't come in there. That make the cars come in the other way? Oh, how about that? Let them go in there. Make the cars come in the cemetery. I think that's great. Stay out Especially the because they're area. loading in the back, so they should never be in the front. So we just block right it there. off the cars completely. They should never be in the section. front. They put trussels up now. Mr. Miller goes out and puts trussels up to keep the cars from going down blue drive, and that's, that's right. a good idea. The only okay. problem with that is that... A crossing guard is going to have a tough time differentiating, other than if they see a kid in the car, right? Faculty who is going to be driving their automobiles, and like, do we tell the faculty going forward to come in the cemetery so that there's literally no, literally no car traffic on Rosecliff? Yeah. But How many faculty members are arriving at the same time? As the yeah, well, there should most of them should be here already, but there's always going to be some who That's are. Right, but my point is that I, I'm, I don't Stay care about the way, inconvenience buses. for them. My point is just that if we have somebody posted there, if there are fac if there's faculty arriving, right, right. But I prefer to I prefer to have them come in the. I mean, I would. I have this in heartbeat. You okay. what? I have this. this Me too. I'd be like tomorrow. Yeah. Well, what well, I, I told Steve and Wayne when I talked to them. That I would, that they said they would talk to the police and make sure the police didn't have an issue with, with the buses going through the development, which Steve said that they're fine I with. Remember this with my, my kids were in school. This is the way it was set up. Yeah. I like it. Um, the, the issue with the faculty uh, going in the uh, cemetery? cemetery drive is the fact that then you'll you'll keep you won't put any trusses up out here to keep the people from going down the drive. You're going to have, I think you'll have people sneaking through there then. I think we need to keep, I, th I still think you have to let the faculty come in Moon Drive or okay. Rose Cliff. Yeah. Because uh, they're going to park over in this big parking lot over here, right? Right, yeah. Right. Um, I think we need, to, we need to separate the buses and the cars. We still need to put the trussels up. Because if we don't put trussels up like Mr. Miller does, you're going to get the ones running that boom drive. Okay. That's going to create a hazard. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so once is, again, you guys are fine with me taking this forward to the full. I mean, yeah. I think that makes sense. You're, makes sense. you're I, focusing on safety. You're focusing on safety. You're and it's a cost the issue. Times. You're saying every time it's a cost issue yeah. because of the staging and weight. Yeah. Uh, I told the Steve and Wayne that I would try and get it done. So it's, or, it's or on the, the committee. Yeah. It sounds like this was done because. People were misbehaving, so their reaction yeah. was to well, uh, to, uh, you know, to I, put this in place. I don't want to malign Mr. Miller, but no, no, I have no. a hard time he with all the I have a hard it. time with the attitude. It doesn't matter what I tell the parents; they won't do what I say. Uh, really, no. that, right, you're not even willing well, to try. Okay. Like <laughs> we, we can't even. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like that's a pretty defeatist attitude. Well, I can tell the parents, but they won't do anything. Uh, so, but like well, I said, we can mitigate that. that. I mean, the first for organization coming over, I mean, this was probably something that should have been implemented, like, before school. Yeah, or not. It, it clearly mean, it should have, but we didn't, you know, we didn't, unfortunately, for whatever reason, Steve said, I'm not blaming this on you. No, no, we no, didn't I, see I, the roots. Whether that's our fault, your fault, I don't care whose fault no, it is. I'm not, they, they, not a finger-pointing guy, but... We didn't know about the bus number increase. I'm speaking of the board. We didn't know about the bus number increase and how much more complicated this voting was going to be beforehand. And if we'd known, we probably would have looked into it. But we didn't know. Right. And I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers. I don't care. At this point, it doesn't matter whose fault it was. Right? I'm just trying to fix it. Yeah. That's um, and I, I think... They think before anything's changed in the future, I mean, it needs to come to the board. 
whether we have a building administrator, whoever it is, wants to make a change, especially something like to that. To something so important as buses. Yeah. And I point. don't think Dane realized, especially, I don't think he knew how many extra buses there were gonna be this year. It wasn't nearly as big an inconvenience last year, right? Because there right. were fewer buses. Because we got, we're covering a bigger territory. Yeah. yeah. Because there's kids from all over the joint yeah. or district Mm -hmm. at this building of course as well as monocracy right? so you know it wasn't as big but it I agree with you issue, Scott it doesn't yeah. matter I still think they should have run it by us he should have run it by uh -huh. us before changing it regardless but um, so okay so I think we're in I think it's pretty clear that we're in agreement right. to take that to the full board yes. so we will we will do that and then if the board approves it yeah, we'll, we'll lean on them and try to get the staff there so it, it's not going to happen immediately Steve but in the right. hopefully in a Communicate that. We have to communicate, communicate that, that to Dane. But now, what you're thinking of? Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. We'll sure get the wheels it. rolling now. We'll get it voted on, and hopefully yeah. the implementation could happen fairly quickly after it's voted on by the full I board. Appreciate that. Yeah. Right. Like I said, I, I hope you believe that I am honestly, I'm honestly trying to help, and I'm not a finger pointer. That's just, it's just not the way I'm wired. So. Okay, uh, are there any other issues that anyone thinks we need to discuss at this point? I'm good. All right, great. I appreciate public. everyone's time. Uh, sure yeah, I, I did look to make sure that okay. we're good. What's that? You guys don't have, there's nothing else for you from you guys? Okay, great. Thank you everyone for your attendance. We are adjourned.